Hello there. Today I'm literally playing with chunk. These two things here. We have temperature sensors. They are called LM35DT. These two are from a IBM a blade centers blower and they have literally blown off the board because the, uh, the bearings of the fan uh, were worn out and they shook so strong that they fell off. So you can also see the, the legs here are broken off, but that's good enough for me to play with it. And we have a pressure sensor or a vacuum, vacuum sensor, depending on which port you connect. Uh, port 1 is, let me look at the data sheet, port 1 is for negative pressure and port 2 is for positive pressure. And this one comes from a medical device, it was used to measure the oxygen pressure in a, in a respirator uh, device. And this one is rather old, it's from 1984, but you can still buy them. They still look exactly the same. They are no longer from Microswitch, they are from Honeywell, and a sensor like that costs $400 right now. Okay, let's have a look what we can do with them. Let's start with this temperature sensor. It measures temperature in centigrade. Uh, I think there is also a Fahrenheit uh, device around. But by the way, who needs them? Um, it measures from minus 50 to plus 150 degrees Celsius. And you, up, you need absolutely no uh, further external uh, components. In fact, you can build something like that. There is the sensor, there is a battery clip, there is an on-off button, and there are two connectors that go to a multimeter. And now I show you how that works. Okay, now that's the simplest temperature probe you can get. Uh, what you need is a power supply. I have the two coin cells here. You need at least 4 volts, so one coin cell alone is only 3 volt, that's not enough. I stack two on top of each other and we get 6 volts. Uh, I added an on-off button uh, switch and yeah, that's about it. Uh, the three legs here, uh, I don't know which, uh, in which order they are. One is ground, one is power supply, it takes from 4 volts to 30 volts, it doesn't matter, you don't need to calibrate anything, just put 4 volt, 10 volt, 12 volt, 15, 30 volt, whatever you want. And the other one is the output, uh, I think it's in, uh, yeah, it's like a, a 78 uh, voltage regulator, there is the voltage input from the battery, there is ground, and this, the third one, is output. Okay, let's see what it does. Now we can see 0 0.244 volts, that means we have exactly 24.4 degrees Celsius here inside this room, or at least here on this uh, thermal sensor, and if I Hold it with my finger, you can see temperature goes up, 29, 30 degrees. The output is 10 millivolt per degree, so 310 millivolts would be 31 degrees Celsius. And that's it. You can put that uh, thermal sensor here wherever you want. You can dip it in the water if you put some plastic around it and that's probably 
the simplest possible temperature sensor you can get. And you need absolutely no calibration because it's 10 millivolt per degree Celsius. It doesn't matter what input uh, voltage you have. Even it, you can even drive uh, some load. It, it's capable to drive up to 10 milliamps. And that's, for example, what I did here. So that's the same arrangement. I have a battery clips. I have two batteries stacked. There is the sensor on off switch and one potentiometer to adjust for the uh, for the mechanical instrument here. And if I turn that on, you can see it's 24 degrees Celsius. And you may wonder, this scale here is a little bit weird. They have 10, 15, 25 volt uh, divisions here. Every 5 volt divided in 10 smaller divisions with a larger division in between, which is two and a half. I don't know what kind of engineer has invented this. It must have been an Italian one. I'm sorry, but this is not how you do it. So this is really, if you want to have 12 volt, this is from a, from a power supply, from a lab power supply that I converted to a digital readout. 12 volt is 10 and 4 small units. So every small unit here is half a volt, but it's, it's a pain to read and uh, in fact, yeah. Also here we have 20, 24 and a half volt. And if I touch the temperature sensor here, you see how the needle rises up to 30 volt. And that's the maximum for this instrument here. It's not the maximum for the uh, temperature uh, sensor. By the way, it is also capable of measuring negative uh, temperatures, but then you need also a negative voltage because, uh, or a negative voltage source, because by itself it cannot switch from positive to negative. So if you only have this battery solution, one voltage battery solution, you can only measure positive uh, temperatures. But I thought this is quite an interesting chip. Or, yeah, it's a chip, it's not a transistor, although it looks like a transi transistor, it's much more. So you can also hook that one to an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. And I think the absolute fantastic uh, feature is you don't need a calibration because you just read the millivolts and you have the temperature. For this one here to adjust the potentiometer for the needle to uh, show the right value. I just hooked up my digital multimeter to the output of the sensor and I adjusted to the potentiometer for the needle to show exactly the same value. As easy as that. Okay, let's play with the pressure sensor. Now this pressure sensor here, they come in different uh, types for different pressure ranges. This one has only pressure range for 5 psi, that's not very much. Uh, let me be correct. No, it's only 2 psi, I have another one which goes to 5. But of course there are also other models that are suitable for higher pressures. So what can you do with the pressure sensor for such low pressures? Well, one idea is to measure the uh, content of a tank, of a liquid, of a tank full of liquid of any kind, preferably water, because that's the easiest to handle. And I'll show you how that works. Okay then, that's 
a container full of water. It has a height of about 26-27 centimeters and if I want to know how much water there is actually inside I could of course take my ruler here oops I have to hold it the right side up and we can see it's about 26 and a half centimeters of water. Okay, now you don't always have the possibility to put the ruler everywhere. Maybe you have a rainwater tank which is underground and you want to know how much water is inside. Well, easiest way is this. This is my pressure sensor. As you have seen before, there is one long hose that will go into the tank of water and there is a shorter hose which will be connected to any kind of air pump or in this case I will blow by myself inside this tube. Um, and what it does is the following. First we need to put the hose into the tank until it touches the ground down here. It doesn't matter if the hose is straight or not, you can coil it around, uh, you can hang a, a weight on it, uh, it doesn't matter if it's straight or if it's curled. And then you see that the water is filling the hose up to here where the water level is and now I blow the water out of the hose and I clamp the input hose shut and then the pressure inside this hose is exactly uh, the same as the pressure down here because I had to blow all the air out of the hose and that's exactly the same pressure now. So we should be able to measure that pressure and uh, display in fact the depth of the water. Let's see if that works. Of course a more elegant uh, solution would be to use some kind of mechanical pump or even an electric pump like for example this one that comes from a automatic blood pressure uh, monitor or a blood pressure meter you may find them sometimes in the electronic waste, they are also consumer goods. They have little pumps to uh, pressurize the system and uh, yeah, they are quite handy, running at how much? I don't know, 12 volt, 6 volt, ah here, 6 volt and they are able to make pressure up to 1 bar. One bar would be enough for a water column of 10 meters. So that's pretty easy to calculate. 10 meters or one bar. One meter is 100 millibar and 30 centimeters are uh, 30 millibars. Yeah, so per one millibar per centimeter. Okay, now Let's see what happens. I am constantly pumping a little bit because the whole system here is not completely airtight. So that's a cheap little piston here. It's from Fischer Technik, if you know that. Maybe it's not a very well known toy uh, on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. But here in Europe, we all know what Fischer Technik is. And they also have a pneumatic set. And uh, let's see what the voltmeter tells us. 
let's zoom in that now that's the frequency generator okay we cannot see because it's like a mirror okay that's better okay let's pump that up bubbles are rising and it shows us 0 0.2726 yeah depending on how hard I pump so it that translates to 26 point something centimeters and 26.5 is exactly what we have I just see that the hose is not completely at the bottom of the container so now it's 27 yeah I would say with a stable power supply we can measure up to half with an accuracy of half a centimeter now you can see the water is creeping up the hose and the pressure is a uh, is uh, decreasing we only have 20 centimeters yes we, we can exactly see that you can see how the water level is rising while the pressure above the water is falling and when it reaches the top of the water column uh, the pressure is of course zero or zero over pressure and um, yeah that's how you measure the contents of a tank with electronic devices uh, I have to say the power supply must be quite stable I have it here on 10 volts DC um, I adjusted it a little bit higher 10.007 so if you build this you probably need uh, a potentiometer for the power supply of this uh, sensor device to correct the reading here on the output we are now on 2.6 centimeters yes that looks about right um, yeah so a stable uh, if you change the power supply you will also change the output so this one needs to be calibrated but calibration is, is quite easy you can take your ruler measure how deep it actually is and then you adjust your output to whatever you need to see okay I hope that was a little bit interesting let's make a few more bubbles here because it looks nice and it sounds funny Okay, thanks for watching.